So it's so great to be back at the Democratic Party here in Hula in Burlington, back in person. And how does it feel to be here with your colleagues? We are just, we couldn't be happier. We are so excited. It's, it, you're right, to be in person is such incredible energy. And we are looking forward to a really great night and celebrating with some incredible candidates who are going to be elected before the night's over. That's fantastic. And now, Anne, can you tell us a little bit about your role as the chair of the Democratic Party of Vermont and uh, a little bit about what you do? Yes, yeah, so I really see my role when things are going really well as chief cheerleader. I really feel like now that with election season, we have had an amazing, talented young staff who they, they know how to, you know, push the levers and make things happen and do the data and all that. And so my job is really just to, to be behind the scenes, helping everybody feel like, you know, it, how important that is, this is, making sure that volunteers that are county chairs are getting out to volunteers, are really giving the resources that our really talented staff can use to then help people get elected. And then I'm also like troubleshooting and problem solving in the background. You know, if there's some issue with someone, I'm happy to come in and kind of smooth things over. You know, it's election season and feathers get ruffled and that sort of thing. But I have to say that this has been an amazing team effort. And it, it, I, I just feel like we've come together in a beautiful way. And this Together for Vermont... You know, it wasn't me who came up with that slogan, but that is, I feel, how we have conducted ourselves. And I feel coming out of this, we are just on a real high and working together beautifully. That's wonderful, Anne. And I am curious how you feel about there's a lot of races nationally that Vermonters and particularly Democratic Vermonters are looking at closely. How do you feel those results may impact um, Vermont Democrats? I want to tell you that tonight we have talked about this and we have said we are going to make this a celebration of Vermont. We are, of course, incredibly concerned about what's going on around the country. I mean, there are so many scary folks, you know, election deniers, science deniers, climate deniers and some of them are going to get elected and that's going to be very very tough but i want to tell you that we are going to keep the focus on vermont and then everybody can go home and you know a lot of those western states the results won't even be in so we'll deal with that you know we can cry into our beer tomorrow but tonight is about vermont and celebrating our amazing candidates well we're, we're looking forward to celebrating vermont with you tonight here at the democratic party and thank you so much for speaking with I us i'm delighted to have you here and uh i look forward to you know let let the party begin so all right thanks a lot Emily. thank you so much great all right. back here at hula in burlington uh, with the vermont democrats i'm joined by democratic candidate for chittenden county state's attorney sarah george sarah how does it feel to be back in person tonight with your colleagues for election night it feels really good i actually didn't really think about it until i like walked in and then was like oh man this is the first time i'm going to see a lot of these folks which is really exciting it's good to see everybody awesome um what are you hoping to accomplish in the state's attorney office for the next couple of years um, I hope to continue doing a lot of the same work I've already been doing. Most of the policies and practices that I implement in this work come from the community and come from the data as it comes out. So I don't have like a plan now for all the things I want to do. I'm just going to wait to see what the community wants and what the data tells us we should be doing and then do what I can to implement policies that will help to address those issues. And uh, you had a pretty challenging um, primary race earlier this year. Uh, did that change the way that you thought about running uh, this campaign or, or the, the way that you think about your, your, your job in the state's attorney office? You know, the, the challenge that I faced was disinformation. So I think that something I really want to focus on going forward is finding ways to be more um, accessible to the community to fact check uh, things that they hear you know I've, I've been thinking about setting up like a tip line or some way that people can call and ask if something they've heard is accurate what during the campaign something I did was get curious with Sarah George and they were like clips to sort of try to tackle some of the disinformation and people have asked that I continue doing that because they found those really helpful so 
I don't think that how I do the work will necessarily change, but I do think how I interact with the community will. Thanks so much, Sarah. Uh, back to you guys, Studio A. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know, myself and I got a kick out of hearing uh, he hearing trucking uh, because that's become something we played every one of my elections on election night. I think the first time they thought maybe play it because I may be trucking out of there because I wasn't supposed to win. But it has been so wonderful to do it. Marcel and I have enjoyed all these years seeing all of you here. And back a couple months ago, come on, come on up here, Marcel. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. The, uh, after, after a month in the hospital with Marcel taking care of me, teaching me how to walk again, I'm glad she's here. But uh, about two or three years ago, we started thinking about where where this is going, what would be the legacy. I felt one, it was time we wanted to go. Uh, we figured up between primaries and general elections, state's attorney and Senate, I've been on the ballot in Vermont 24 times, and that should be enough for most people. <laughs> and, uh, and so we made up our mind, and as it announced a year ago, that we're going to go home and be back at home, have more time with children and grandchildren. But I also saw the way the country is going. And I, this is not a, a plug, but I wrote a book just to finished a couple of months ago called The Path Taken. And I've talked about the downward arc of much of what we've counted on, both Republicans and Democrats, in the U.S. Senate, and how badly it's gone. And I worried about that for the future. We saw on January 6th an example of the worst aspect of that. The one thing that gave me uh, hope at all during this time is watching who would be the next senator. I'm not, I don't want somebody to be a rubber stamp or be a, a duplicate. I want somebody to have Vermont values. Peter Welch has those values and he's our next senator. <laughs> every, I was telling Peter earlier this evening, every time during these past few months, the senators, whether they're running for re-election or just watching elections, have asked me, what is Peter Welch like? I said, you could not ask for a better senator. I don't care what party you're in. You couldn't ask for a better senator because he has the true value, as I pointed out in the book and as I learned. He keeps his word. You can trust him. He cares about our state of Vermont. Now, I got to admit, my first campaign was called the Children's Crusade. We had all these young volunteers, including this young new attorney down the far western, uh, our eastern side of the state, rather, in Windsor County, called Peter Welch. Look who Peter Welch is. Every single one of you on January 3rd at noon, when Peter stands there and takes the oath of office, you can say, Vermont, all of us, we're in good hands. A lot of states aren't going to be able to say that. Vermont can. Vermont can say it with Peter Welch. So, Marcel and I want to Welcome Peter and Margaret up here. This is our future. I'm like when I came.
Let's hear it again for Patrick and Marcel. It's a big Irish family. <laughs> it, it is a big family. Uh, thank you all so much. First of all, I want to thank my wife, Margaret, for all she's done. <laughs> and these are, like, everybody behind me is the big Irish family and friends. <laughs> they, they, they have only begun to misbehave. <laughs> and I want to thank uh, Ryan McLaren, my campaign manager. <laughs> and Ryan, I want to thank you and our whole campaign staff, which is the best in the entire country. And I do also want to thank, again, and I can't stop thanking him enough, Patrick Leahy and his wife, Marcel. Yeah. 48 years of service with integrity, with honesty, with standing up for democracy every single day of those 48 years. Patrick and Marcel, thank you so much. <clears throat> And Bernie Sanders, my partner for 16 years. Bernie was so shy and so holding back that it took him one hour to endorse me after I announced. <laughs> Bernie, thank you very much for that endorsement. You know, it's, it, it, it's, a, it's an extraordinary time in our democracy. We know that. We're excited about the outcome of the election here for the U.S. Senate. But this election is in the shadow of what happened on January 6th. And as we are here today celebrating this moment, there's votes being cast, there's votes being counted, but it's uncertain whether all election results will be accepted. And I was there when the Capitol was attacked and the shot was fired and the doors were broken down. And everyone was dismayed because this election, unlike any other election, has democracy right front and center on the ballot. And our mission here in Vermont is to restore and defend and protect the democracy that we value. So, a, a lot of people have asked me, Peter, you know, how do you do it? Or how can we all do it after what happened on January 6th? And you know, the answer to that, we don't pick 
the times we're in. We don't pick the challenges those times present. The choice we make is to face those challenges, whatever they may be. That's what we do. And you know, I have so much confidence that we Vermonters will do that again, and our example will be a beacon of hope for the rest of the country. Look at our history. No, look at our collective history. This is all of us. Ours was the first state, the first state in its constitution to ban slavery. And when our country was riven by the Civil War, it was Vermonters more than any other by population who enlisted in the Union cause to save our Union and to ban and abolish slavery. And in the midst of that, with all those challenges, it was a predecessor of Patrick Leahy, Justin Morrill, who created the land-grant college where there was a fundamental commitment to the educational opportunity of everyday people, Vermonters who wanted to get ahead. <clears throat> And you know, when it came to the question of whether every citizen should have the opportunity to marry the person that that person loves, it was the Vermont General Assembly with Republicans and Democrats who said the law of this state is you have the right to marry the person you love. <laughs> And even fast for Patrick Leahy, preceded by George Aiken, who said it all when he said about Vietnam, a war that was misguided, was tearing our country apart, causing heartbreak and loss of life, said we should declare victory and come home. <clears throat> and who was the senator that succeeded him and cast his first vote to end funding for the Vietnam War? That was Patrick Leahy. <laughs> So what we've seen in our history is that we don't pick the problems, we face the problems. And you know, some folks think it's like a farmer farms in the weather that the farmer wants. No way. It's the weather you have and it's the problems we have. And a big problem and a challenge we face is democracy and we are going to face it. And you know what's also special about Vermont? It's the way we do democracy. It's the small d democracy. It's mutual respect. It's humility that understands that a person that you disagree with, maybe even vehemently, is most likely guided by the same aspiration you have to make this a better state. We understand that listening is more important than talking and that by having an approach where we seek the common ground for the common good, we can make a better and more just society. So I gotta tell you, <clears throat> I am so excited about the challenges ahead and how we can face them. And I'm looking forward to doing that with who I know will be our next member of Congress, Becca Ballant, the first woman to represent us in Congress. And Becca and Bernie and I are gonna be there in the way all Vermonters wanna be there. We know that this state that fought for marriage equality. We know that this state that stood up to Joe McCarthy when he was trying to take our, away our civil liberties. We know that this state that banned slavery in its original constitutional document. We know that this state offers America hope for the future. And with the Vermont way, we can be successful and face the challenges that are before us. And I, I am so excited to be your representative in the United States Senate to take those Vermont values to Washington. Thank you.
everyone, I want to say that it's incredible to see this amazing family of blood relatives. Yeah! But we are, so yes, actually, let's give them all a cheer. Yeah! But guess what? Peter has a much larger family than that. We are all family to Peter Welch in this room. And we could not be more excited to be sending our Vermont brother to the U.S. Senate. So thank you, thank you. We are now in a little bit of a waiting period, so everybody go refresh your drink, chit chat. We will be back very soon, as soon as we have more results. Thank you very much. Studio A, I'm joined here with Burlington Mayor Moreau Weinberger, who, um, Thank you so much, Studio A. I'm joined tonight here at Hula with Burlington Mayor Moreau Weinberger. Weinberger. Moreau, how are you feeling tonight? Well, this is a great night for, for Vermont. We've had a vote on two really significant constitutional questions. We Just a few moments ago, we saw Senator Leahy kind of hand off the torch to Senator-elect Welch. Uh, both of them are men I've worked with and known since I was a kid, worked for a long time. And uh, we've just elected the first uh, woman to, to Congress from Vermont. So that's sort of the overall uh, tenor of, of the, the evening. And then on top of that, we've gotten some very good news that Burlingtonians, it appears, have decisively uh, come down in favor of building a new high school, which, uh, yeah, I'm very excited about. You can definitely feel the excitement here tonight. And with uh, six out of eight uh, Burlington wards reporting on that Burlington High School bond vote, um, it's looking likely that it will pass. And now, um, how, what does this mean for Burlington residents? Well, it means that we've got an answer to really one of the biggest challenges we have. You know, we, a, a city, a, certainly a, a great city like Burlington, needs a permanent high school. The district has done a great job. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, working with the, with the state, really being very resourceful to set up a temporary high school upon the decision that, that the, the old high school had to be abandoned. Um, but that was, everyone knew that was, you know, my, my daughter goes there, that's a, it's a temporary situation. We need a 21st century high school for, for our students. And um, I, I certainly, I and I think everyone in, involved in this, uh, I was very conscious that we were bringing this forward to voters at a challenging economic time when we're experiencing inflation unlike anything we've seen in, in years, when there's just great financial uncertainty. And in that context, it is really remarkable, I think, uh, that, and very clear where Burlingtonians' values are, that they have come down decisively uh, in favor of making this investment in, in, a, in a permanent high school. That's great. Now, and really quickly, what's the next steps for Burlington High School now that the bond has passed? Yeah, well, that's a great point. It's a, the, the, the work is far from done. I mean, what this does mean is that the design and construction teams, of course, can move forward full speed to try to be in construction, to be in construction by next fall, which is their goal. Um, what it also means is that uh, this, the school district, the commissioners, city councilors, and I are very committed to making good on what we said to voters, which is that we're going to continue to work very hard for the next three years as this building is being designed and constructed to do everything we can to bring down the ultimate cost to Burlington taxpayers. It would be really wrong for Burlingtonians alone to have to pay for a, what is it going to be a great regional facility serving hundreds of non-Burlington students. It would be wrong for Burlingtonians alone to have to pay for these uh, environmental cleanup costs, which, you know, the Burlingtonians weren't the ones that made this pollution. So we have a lot of work ahead, but uh, what's very exciting coming out of tonight is to know that this project is going to get done and it is our kids are going to have a great 21st century high school uh, for for the decades ahead. Well, thank you very much, Mayor Moreau. Looking forward to seeing uh, those next steps play out with the high school. Thank And thank you so much. Back to you, Studio A. It is my great 
privilege to introduce a champion for all Vermonters and our very soon to be senior senator, Senator Bernie Sanders. Well, on, on behalf of my wife, Jane, who everybody knows, and my entire family that is scattered around here, uh, we just want to thank uh, Pat Leahy for his years of dedication and service to our state. I am delighted, more than delighted, to have as a new colleague in the Senate, Peter Welch, who I am confident is going to do a great job. And before the evening is out, I am confident Becca Ballant will be our new Congresswoman. I don't have to tell uh, anybody here uh, that these are tough times for our country. Uh, we are fighting to make sure that it is women who control their own bodies, not the government. We are fighting for our kids and grandchildren so that the planet that they live in will be healthy and habitable because we're going to take on the greed of the fossil fuel industry, transform our energy system. And we're here tonight to remind Trump and his friends that in a democracy, sometimes you lose elections. Hey, Trump, you lost that election. And at a time when over 60 percent of our people nationally are living paycheck to paycheck, when 85 million Americans have no health insurance, when bright young kids can't afford to go to college, when we pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs, when a half a million Americans are homeless, what we are saying right now is we are prepared to take on the billionaire class and create an economy that works for all, not just a few. We are all proud that Vermont has a long history, a history of fighting for justice, whether it's racial justice, whether it is social justice, whether it is environmental justice or economic justice. And I am confident that with Peter alongside of me in the Senate and Becker in the House, we are going to become a model for what this country can be in terms of fighting for ordinary people, not just the people on top. So let me thank all of you, not only for the work you have done to help elect Peter and Becker, but to understand the struggle continues tomorrow and the day after and the day after. We are taking on enormously powerful forces, but the stakes are enormous. We're fighting for the future of our kids. Jane and I have seven grandchildren. We're fighting for our grandchildren and your grandchildren. Let's go forward together. Let's do it. And in line with some a very important issue that Senator Bernie Sanders addressed, I want to announce some very important, incredible news, which is that Prop 5, the Reproductive Liberty Amendment, has passed. <laughs> And you all deserve to applaud yourselves because so many of you stepped up and knocked on doors and went to rallies and contributed and talked to your neighbors and made sure that people were not bamboozled 
by the ridiculous, you know, falsehoods we heard. And this just makes me very, very proud of all of us. So uh, congratulations. It's great. And now I have to say that it is election night, as we know, and I wish I had more control than I do, but I don't, so guess what? We're going to take a little break while we wait for some more results. So enjoy yourselves. Thanks. Thank you so much, Jordan and Christine. I'm joined with Kate Logan, who's just been elected as a Burlington State Representative. Kate, how are you feeling? I feel great. Um, we knew it was an uncontested race. Uh, we worked really hard in the primary this summer to secure our spot. Knew that we were going uncontested into the general, but it still feels great to know that um, I'll be going in as one of the most progressive um, legislators to ever serve the old North End and downtown of Burlington in the legislature. That's wonderful. Um, and looking forward to this next biennium, what are you hoping to accomplish? Well, a lot of what I hope to accomplish in the next biennium depends on what happens across the state. In all 150 House uh, seats, I've worked as an advocate in the State House for years and have worked really hard on issues where the governor vetoed uh, the legislation that we were able to pass. And more often than not, we weren't able to overturn the governor's veto. And um, and it looks like we're going into another biennium with Governor Scott um, as our governor. And so I'm really interested. I'm looking to see what happens in all of the other House races and in the Senate to know what the composition is and the general political orientation. But in general, I think that we need to move really aggressively to a more equitable and sustainable economy kind of across the board. Child care, education from birth to college, health care, um, energy, you name it. If it's something that um, working people are struggling to pay for housing um, on a daily basis, then Vermont should be doing more, just like every other state in the country needs to do right now while we're struggling um, at the federal level to get all the stuff that we know we need. And is there anything else you'd like your constituents to know? I would love my constituents to know that they can reach me at my website, www.kateloganforhouse.com. You can find my email address and my social media there. Um, I would love you to sign up to, um, for my social media and my email list so that I can communicate with you because when it comes time to make a decision in the legislature and take testimony on issues that are impacting the people in the Chittenden 16 district, then I want to hear from you. I'll be reaching out to you, but I want you to reach out to me. And I would love you to come visit the State House. I've learned that there are many legislators who get elected to office who have never actually been to Montpelier and visited the State House. So I'd love to bring Burlington to Montpelier so that you can share your story on issues that matter to you in the State House. That sounds great, Kate. And we're looking forward to seeing how the rest of the races shake up and the steps that you take in the next biennium. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Back to you, Studio A. Welcome back to Hula in Burlington uh, with the Vermont Democrats. Uh, I'm joined by Tanya Vihovsky, who's a uh, candidate for the Vermont State Senate in the Chittenden Central District. Tanya, how would you describe the feeling in the room tonight? The feeling in the room tonight is really excited. I mean, people, I think, are really excited to be sending our first woman congresswoman congressperson to Washington and just, I think, really excited for all of the great opportunities we have to put good people in office. So uh, you served in the Vermont House um, before this and now you're jumping to the Senate. Can you describe a little bit about that decision to jump from the House to the Senate and how your work might look a little bit different moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, I, so I served in the House, which is 150 people. And when the Senate districts were redrawn, there was an immediate open seat. And then when my mentor, Chris Pearson, decided not to run again, there was a second open seat. And after a lot of conversation with him, 
we sort of came to the, the conclusion that in order to continue to have a progressive voice in the House, somebody needed to run for that seat. And as a social worker, I rely on relationships. And it's a lot easier to build relationships with 30 people than it is to build them with 150. So I just felt like I would be able to do more for Vermonters with my skill set in the Senate and maybe walk, fill Chris Pearson's shoes at least a little bit. <laughs> Tanya Vihovsky, candidate for Vermont State Senate. Thank you so much. Back to you guys in the studio. Hello, everyone. We wish that some of these races had been called, and they haven't been. However, I am now going to bring up my friend, and one of Vermont's fiercest advocates for all of us, Brenda Siegel. <laughs> Brenda, come up. Brenda fought an incredibly hard race, and we could not be prouder of what she's done to stand up for Vermonters in need to hold the governor accountable and to continue to be the fierce advocate that we know you will continue to be on behalf of so many Vermonters who you know, count on your voice and your beliefs and your commitment. Thank you so much, Brenda, on behalf of all of us. Good evening, everyone. I just spoke to the governor and congratulated him on his win. I'm going to start by saying that Susan B. Anthony gave her whole life to the work of voting rights for women. Her whole life. And then she died on the eve of its inevitability. The work is about making progress, fighting for us to have safer and stronger communities. We all need to become brave enough to lose. All of us. One thing that stuck out to me throughout this race was how important it was. Not only that someone ran, but that that person be someone with knowledge, experience, guts, and most importantly, the lived experience to make clear what we face, what is going wrong, and what work we all have to do, all of us have to do, to make it better. As public figures and elected leaders, we can get lost in outcomes or wins, but the outcomes that matter most are if we get housing to all Vermonters. If we begin to make change across the finish line for strong, bold action for climate. If we have adequate childcare, and if we stop burying our children from overdose and suicide. At some point in this campaign, I turned to my team and I said, let's fight like hell to win, but also let's fight like hell to win on the issues because losing on the issues is not an option for me. We 100% without fail won on the issues, and we did not just win. We knocked it out of the park beyond compare. If we were not there beating the drum when VRAP and ERAP was cut off without notice, if I had feared at all speaking truth to power when this administration was ready to cause harm, we would not have found $20 million 
we would not have a new commissioner of DCF and we would not see a scramble to do something. But we are not done yet. I was just at a meeting last night. We ended this campaign just as we started it, meeting with people experiencing homelessness. So I was at a meeting with people utilizing the hotel program and through tears, people told me their immense fear of being dumped back in the street. We have to do something. I am talking to all of you. We have to do something. I know I'm not done and I need all of you standing with me and these folks are ready to tell their stories and we are going to help them do just that. We broadcast that childcare money wasn't getting out the door and now it is. We used a megaphone about the needs of our downtowns. We shared bravely and explicitly about the overdose crisis and the need for us to move forward. We will get overdose prevention sites this year because we were not afraid and I am not done yet. This year, I will work with a legislator to introduce a comprehensive bill on the overdose crisis, and with all of your help, we will get it done. I want to turn to the 845 families, because this is personal, who lost loved ones, and promise you that your loved ones will not die in vain. We will fix this for other families, no matter how long it takes. And in that, 845 families included was my nephew, Kaya Siegel, and while I have the platform, I want to turn to my dad who's here tonight and say, though I was there, I can't imagine what it was like to bury your first son and your first grandson. And I say to you that they will not die in vain. I won't let them. We talked about climate and the clean heat standard and corrected the record on that. And we drove home the need for the build on in-state renewable energy. And we are going to get some serious climate action this year. What we have shown throughout this entire race is that Vermonters are worth fighting for and that there are a lot of wins, even in a long shot race. We ran an incredible, truly tireless, though we are tired, <laughs> but tireless, relentless, disciplined, tenacious campaign, and we did absolutely everything we could. We left all of it on the field. I want to start, though, by thanking my staff, Paige D Diana Shopman, my campaign manager who's home with COVID, long COVID, Shanae Chase Clifford, who is the... <laughs> who is the master of debate prep, and you all saw me absolutely crush it in debates, right? <laughs> and, and also thank you, Becca White and Kate Lapp for debate prep as well. Chris Lamb, who is an OG staffer and did a lot for data, finance, call time, and filled in all the gaps. Zoe Flagolet, who came in at the end to do ad admin work. Nick Clark, who was our pinch hitter when we needed him. And there's one person I want to shout out and thank who needs no introduction, Woo! but Mira Macy. Yeah! I have known her her whole life and it was a rocky start, but anyone on the team will tell you that she is now my champion staffer. She is my right hand woman. She did so much and she learned all of it on the job. Thank you all for the absolutely incredible job on a tough race. I want to say about them that they also took on this same risk, the same one I did. They did it anyways, they rose anyways, and we need to rec recognize how hard that is to do, not just for me, but also for them. And trust me, it is hard. 
I also want to say that there's some special champions in this race. You all know who you are. You came out early for us. You kept showing up. My whole team noticed when you showed up. Special big ups to Governor Howard Dean. <laughs> and, and all of the legislators who championed this race and all of my supporters who believed in a Vermont where all can feel loved and supported. It may not have been the outcome we wanted, but it was way better than most imagined and we nailed down the things that mattered most to Vermonters. Because of all of you, we will get those things across the finish line this session or in the coming sessions, and that's no small triumph. It is in fact huge. My most important thank yous are to my family, my dad who has stood by me every step of the way, my mom who quietly sent me emails and texts and phone calls of encouragement, but didn't ever ask for a return call. And the one who deserves the most praise is Ajna Siegel, my son. It is not easy when, for our kids when we run for office. It is not easy for them when we don't have the outcomes we want. But Ajna has shown up at events, stood behind me, been in a commercial, and held debate watch parties. He, and as of today, he has show. He, ha he has a tattoo with my logo <laughs> that he showed me when he got here. <laughs> that was his gift to me. I didn't know about it. He championed his mama. Ajna Siegel, I love you. You see, together we are stronger. The work is hard, it is long, it is lonely, but it is worth it. And I hope that what I leave you with, what I leave you all with, is that tomorrow we must get up, stand strong, and fight another day. We have accomplished so much together and we will accomplish so much more. I said over and over again throughout the race that this is a tough fight, but it is not even close to the toughest one I've had to face in my life, and I'm still standing. And believe me when I say, I am still standing now and ready to keep pushing forward. To those of you that are fearful of loss and so don't see the point in trying, words I heard at times, we have to try. Please join me and all of us to go forward. To all of you in Vermont who have to get up and fight anyways, even though it's hard, like I always have, I promise I am going nowhere to every Vermonter who said that I was their only hope to me. Thank you, but that is simply not the truth. We are all each other's only hope. Together we have got this, let's keep moving. We elected the most historic slate in the history of Vermont. The most women, the most LGBTQIA folks, the most people of color, we did that together. For my race, I'm not gonna lie, this and my team, this is a tough moment, but it is in no way a loss. Just look at what we did together. It's really quite something. Thank you, Vermont. And I am nowhere near done yet. I am only just getting started. Thank you. Brenda, 
you may not have gotten the votes we wanted you to get, but you are a winner for so many thousands of Vermonters. And as you said, you fought harder fights and you will continue to fight those fights. And we Vermonters are so fortunate to have you and so many folks who live in the margins. You are in their corner and you will be fighting for them from now on. Thank you so much, Brenda. It is now my great Listen up, everybody, because you're not going to want to miss this. It is now my great pleasure to bring up Elizabeth Wall, who is the wife of Becca Ballant. <laughs> Elizabeth, I know you're here. <laughs> Very good. You have to come up quickly or I'm gonna start talking. Cause I can't wait. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Good evening. Thank you so much for the introduction. You all don't wanna hear from me. So I will be as brief as I possibly can. When Becca, first told me that she wanted to run to represent Wyndham County in the Vermont Senate. Our kids were three and six. And she said, it's really a bad time. The kids are little. What if it doesn't work? What if, and I, and I said to her, Becca, you've always wanted to do this. You believe that this is what you wanna do. It's always going to be a bad time. It's never gonna get easier. They're gonna be teenagers, or they're gonna be in college, or you're gonna get a different job. And then I said, besides, you probably won't win. <laughs> so you might as well try now and get your name out there. I tell you this story because we don't win every race. It is worth it to get out there and take a step do the thing that you're scared of. Do the thing that you believe in more than everything, even when it feels like this is a terrible time to do this. Why am I doing this now? You're doing it now because it matters. It doesn't have to be running for office. It could be serving as town moderator. It could be just watching the polls. It could be babysitting someone else's kids so they can watch the polls. But I want you to think about, I'm so grateful to see all of you here. It's amazing. And I want you to think about what is the thing that is hard or scary or inconvenient? Because this is our work, not just tonight and not just tomorrow and not just in two years, but every day if we want this democracy to be what we know it can be. It is my incredible honor to get to be the spouse of the first Congresswoman from the state of Vermont. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Becca Ballins. team up. We're bringing the team up. Hello. Hello, Vermont. Thank you, Vermonters. Thank you for your vote. Thank you for your confidence in me. Thank you for giving me this incredible honor and opportunity to serve the state that I love so much. Thank you, thank you. I 
I just received uh, a call from Liam Madden conceding the race. And I, I want to thank Liam for his candidacy and for his service to our country. We both share a deep commitment to Vermont. He's actually from my home county of, of Wyndham County, and I know he's going to continue to serve his community well. So thank you, Liam, for running. It's important to run. And of course, I have to give so much credit to the best congressional delegation in the whole country, which is the Vermont delegation. I meet a lot of people from across the nation and legislatures from other states, and they say, you are so lucky. You've got the giant of the Senate, Patrick Leahy, of course, as we know, unparalleled service to Vermont. We've got Peter Welch, who has been a mentor and a friend to me, who's going to help me succeed in the House. Yeah, he is. And of course, Bernie Sanders, who's been uh, the conscience of the nation. And I was so, so honored to have his support. It really gave us so much energy in the home stretch. So thank you to all of those men who have served us so well. I can't wait to be a colleague with the senior and junior senator from Vermont. Thank you. <laughs> So I'm, I'm standing here with my family and my team because tonight we reaffirm that Vermont and the nation is still a place where anything is possible. We, we are all still capable of change and promise and progress. And tonight, after 200 and 31 years, Vermonters are sending a woman to Congress. Thank you. So, so thank you to my incredible campaign team for hard work and hustle and commitment and joy, so much joy. I know everybody says this, but it's true, the best campaign team in politics. I thank you. Thank you for your deep commitment to Vermont and to this movement, this movement of so many people here in Vermont. I want to thank also my incredible campaign manager, Natalie Silver. As, as Natalie and I like to say, we're, we're two scrappy little broads. Watch out! <laughs> and I want to just thank most sincerely, my, my close friend and advisor, Julia Barnes. So, Julia Barnes, I thank you for believing in me and for helping me to believe that it was possible for us to do this incredible thing together. Thank you, thank you. And of course, thank you so much to my family, to my parents, to my siblings, to my extended family, but most of all, to my spouse, Elizabeth, and our two kids, Abe and Sarah, who are with me tonight. We, we always said in our family that running for Congress was really a family project. It's not just about one person. And it really is. It is, is a project. And the three of us have made 
three of you, excuse me. Um, there are actually four of us, yes. You can tell it's been a year, I'm a little tired. Um, the three of you have made incredible sacrifices to get me to this place. And being in politics is incredibly lonely at times. It's really lonely. But it's not work that's done alone. It's done in a team, and we are a very tight team in this family. Team Ballant Wall, you are my rock, you are my refuge. I honestly could not be here without you. Thank you. So I have said over and over on this campaign that this is a time for courage. I know, I know so many of us feel like these are such dark times. And it's so easy to be cynical about politics. But if we, those of us on the stage, if we had believed the conventional wisdom, if we had believed that change was impossible, I would not be standing here tonight. So take note and take heart. Vermont is a place where kindness and integrity and courage matter. Vermont is a place where the daughter of an immigrant dad and a working class mom can be the first woman and the first gay person to represent Vermont in the US House of Representatives. So there are so, so many brave women leaders who gave me the courage and the hope over my lifetime to do this. And those strong women who have come before me have helped me to feel like I could possibly have a life in politics. And you know some of their names, they're incredible women like Shirley Chisholm and Ann Richards and Bella Abzug and Geraldine Ferraro and someone you may not have heard of, but whose name I need to bring into the room tonight. Her name was Elaine Noble. She was the first openly gay person to run for a legislature in the United States. It was 1975, it was Massachusetts State House. She experienced so much hatred and discrimination. And when I learned of her race and her victory, there was this little part of me that thought maybe, maybe, maybe someday. She's still alive and I just want us to remember that it's people like Elaine Noble who did this at a time when it was incredibly dangerous to do so that enabled me to run today. Another, another hero of mine is Congresswoman Barbara Jordan, who I know many of you know. She was the first black woman elected to the Texas Senate and the first black woman who was elected from the South to represent uh, in the US House of Representatives. She said this of our nation, we are a people in a quandary about the present. We are a people in search of our future. We are a people in search of a national community. That is still true now. We are a people in search of a national community. I've been all over the state during this campaign. Everywhere I go, every town, every meet and greet, somebody will say to me, Becca, I don't want to hate my neighbors. I don't want to fear my neighbors. I want to live in a community where we can talk to each other again. So if you feel this way in this crowd, you're not the only one feeling that way. Thousands of Vermonters are feeling that way, and I know thousands of people across the country are feeling this way. We cannot continue to demonize each other. We have to stop and really see each other, see how much we share, even when we disagree, even when we hear hateful words. Every parent, regardless of their political party, 
worries about their kids' futures. Every working family right now is anxious and uncertain about how they're going to make ends meet. We're all afraid for the planet, all of us. We're afraid for the freedoms that we hold dear. And those fears are justified. And I know Congressman Welch spoke to this earlier. Oh, Senator-elect! <laughs> Senator-elect! <laughs> so, so as, as Senator-elect Welch said earlier, we know what's at stake. And it's not just the next two years. This is going to take a long time to right this ship. We got to dig deep. We got to find our courage. We have to find our strength. We have to lift each other up. Because even if we get good news in the midterms, the work is not over. We have a democracy to save. So, so yes, yes, this is a time for great courage. It's a time for leaders who are courageous enough to say that our politics do not work for regular people. This is a time for leaders to fight as hard for other people's right to vote as they fight for their reelection. This is a time for us to end the politics that fuel corporate greed. This is a time for us to rebuild the middle class and bring us together. This is a time to say that affordable health care and stable housing for all will make us a stronger nation, not a weaker one. But, but most of all, my challenge, your challenge, the challenge of all of us is to have the everyday courage that will knit us back together as a nation. We have to listen truly to each other even when we disagree. Not so that we can just argue, but so we can truly understand where somebody is coming from. Let's have the courage to listen with compassion but to also speak with conviction. Let's have also the courage to know what's non-negotiable. And let's have the courage to know when we're actually wrong and we need to change our view. That takes real courage. So a lot of Vermonters ask me why I still have hope. Why am I running for Congress at this time? I feel so dark. Why do I see the light despite all the obstacles? I'm hopeful because of people who came before me, like Shirley Chisholm and Bella Abzug. I'm hopeful because of Ann Richards and Geraldine Ferraro and Barbara Jordan and Elaine Noble. I'm hopeful because those courageous leaders made it possible for me to be here tonight. Oh, yeah. And honestly, I'm hopeful because I never thought I'd be standing here. Really. It was a pipe dream. I didn't know anyone in politics. My parents didn't know anyone in politics. It seemed like such a strange notion to think I could run for office someday. But we did it. We did it because of thousands and thousands of Vermonters who stood with us, gave us five bucks, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, made thousands and thousands of calls. I think we made 535,000 calls. And we, we knocked on thousands of doors and we believed that we could reject cynicism and believe in each other, and believe in a grassroots movement that could be fierce and joyful. I ran for the Wyndham County Senate seat for the first time because I refused to accept that the richest nation in the world 
that the richest nation in the world could not take care of working families, could not house them, could not feed them, could not give them health care. I had kids in my own classroom who I know were, were living in tents or in cars, whose parents were struggling with addiction. I still believe that we have to turn towards each other in our communities. That's how, that's how we're gonna find our way through for each other and for our communities. When we started out in this race, we were down in the polls. We didn't have a lot of money. We didn't have a lot of endorsements, but we never stopped believing that if we pulled people together and ran an authentic, genuine race where people could see what I was about, that they would come to us because they wanted something different. This campaign is proved that incredible power of connection. We are craving it. We're a nation that is fraught with loneliness and disconnection. This campaign renewed my hope in the power and the spirit that comes from truly seeing one another and listening deeply and being joyful together. I know that Vermonters believe that politics can be different. That's why we won. That's why we won. I give you, give you my word tonight that I will not back down from hard fights in Washington. I will carry your hopes and your wishes and your stories with me. I will stay rooted in our communities here in Vermont and I will work for our most vulnerable neighbors every single day. Thank you. And I will do this. I will be able to do this because I know you will be standing with me. This past month has been incredible. People stopping me at the store, at the bank, at the post office saying, we're with you. You're going down. You're doing this hard thing. Thank goodness you want to do it because I don't want to do it. I heard that more and more and more. Or what's wrong with you? Or you're too tiny to do it. All the things. I heard all the things. But I will be able to do it because of the belief you've had in this campaign. You believe in this movement because we're fighting for climate action. We're fighting for universal health care. We're fighting for livable wages, for reproductive rights, for the safety of our trans and queer neighbors, for racial equity, for common sense gun laws, for families across the state who want a better life for their kids and grandkids, for a nation finally as good as its promise. So, so please, please have courage, stand firm, be compassionate, find hope and nurture it. We need this of each other. Our nation depends on this. Our future depends on this. We must give each other the courage to do all of this important work together. Thank you. And I have a very big announcement to make. But I'm just going to build the suspense up here while my members get on stage. Mike, Mike. Mike McCarthy, everyone. So while a couple others are coming up, I just need to start by saying thank you. 
We would not be able to do this with all of the heart and soul in this room, all of the volunteers, all of the campaign staff, all of our former members, our retiring members. Thank you so much for your support. So we have been working incredibly hard and I am so proud of all these candidates up here, Jana, Martin, Mike, Tom. I mean, look at this crew. <laughs> and I am so excited to share the news that we have a veto-proof majority. wasn't for our incredible leadership team, our majority leader, Emily Long, Emily. our <laughs> Emily Long, this guy, our majority leader, Whip, Mike McCarthy. <laughs> Martin Lalone and Kathleen James. I had prepared remarks, but I can't give them because I'm just so thrilled at this amazing group of people that are gonna be going to the State House in January on a mission to, Vermont, to make Vermont a better place for everyone. This is the same crew that worked tirelessly to make sure that we are protecting reproductive rights and we pass Prop 5 tonight. So we're gonna to continue to do the work that Vermonters, Vermonters asked us to do. We're gonna to continue to work on affordable housing and childcare. We're gonna take up... We're gonna take up paid family leave. And we are gonna do everything we can to make sure every Vermonter has a fair shot and no one is left behind, no one. We also wouldn't have been able to do this without the incredible staff at the Vermont Democratic Party, our House Campaign Director, Cam. My campaign manager, Connor Kennedy. <laughs> so this is not the end, this is just the beginning of our journey as we head back to Montpelier and take up these critical issues to make sure that we leave no Vermonter behind. Again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Every one of you has contributed to this effort in helping us get this crew elected. So thank you so much, good night. <laughs> What a legislative session we're in for. Wow. The unstoppable Democratic House. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, leadership. Thank you, staff. This is a really a wonderful, wonderful outcome for all of us and for all Vermonters. Next, I need your attention. <laughs> Next, we're going to hear from another of Vermont's amazing women leaders, Allison Clarkson, Majority Leader of the Senate. Come on up.
This is the woman who rocks. This is the woman we all need to thank tonight. Anne Lezak, our astonishing chair of the Vermont Democratic Party. Thank you, Anne. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, does this work? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the Senate is up here. Senators, get up here. Where are all our senators? One, two, three, four. Who are we missing? Is there anybody else? Yeah, where is our Tanya? Tanya, are you here? Ashley. Ash Ashley, come on up. Ashley. Pull up our senators. Any, any other senators out there or Senate elects? Okay, great. Good evening, I'm Allison Clarkson, and I just want to say the Vermont Democratic Party rocks. We, what, what a fabulous night. And we are an astonishing team, and I want to first be so thankful to the party that has helped really establish a, a working team for the Senate Democrats who have, it looks like we're going to be plus one. All our results are not going to be in until tomorrow. But we have, an, we first and foremost want to thank our current incumbents who have all run terrific races. It looks like hopefully everyone will be back. We're, we're living in hope on a couple, and we are, the numbers are looking good, and we are hoping that we will be uh, maybe even plus one, uh, which is very exciting. So we, we are also a veto-proof majority in the Senate. So bring on global warming. Bring on everything that we need to do. Bring on all the work that we need to do. So first and foremost, I, we have two we have two things to chat about. One is our astonishing Senate Democratic Caucus Director, Sally Short, who has done an amazing job. Thank you. Oh. This is the first time in a very long time that we have had a full-time Senate Caucus, Democratic Caucus Director. And it is just exciting what we can do when we have somebody working recruiting with us, raising money with us, working with our candidates, and look at this astonishing field of candidates we've raised, although very few of them are here. <laughs> there, we have a, an incredible field this year, and we're very proud of them. Second, I just want to say that we have the, an example of how well this great group of people work together is in how we are f holding our arms around our teammate, Mark McDonald, in Orange County. It, he is, he is, uh, he's recovering astonishingly well. He is now in full rehab uh, basic training mode, and he is going to be back uh, in, in great shape. But this is a group that pulled together to canvas, raise money, call, uh, go door to door, uh, put in those ads, letters to the editor, make it happen. And this, we made... We have really worked hard to make all these races happen uh, and to bring back a veto-proof majority in the Senate. So thank you, Senators. So <laughs> I think I think I think we're we're thrilled. We're ready to work. Hmm? We're still waiting. We're still waiting. As we're still waiting. So thank you all. It's great to see you. Thank you. It's uh, getting late. I think it's time to uh, bring up some more statewide candidates. What do you think? Is there a treasurer elect in the house? Mike Pichak. I want to say that Mike not only ran a fabulous race, but he was, Mike, I want to say it with him here. I want to say, Mike, you ran an amazing statewide race, but you were also the most incredible team player 
working hard for every other candidate. And we were able to count on you to come through so many times in so many ways. And I just can't wait to have you be our state treasurer. Congratulations. Well, uh, good evening, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for uh, hanging with us. Thanks for staying late. <laughs> uh, but uh, good things uh, come to those who wait, I guess. I'm very excited about our victory. Really excited that Vermonters put their trust in our race and in myself to lead the treasurer's office forward. I'm really looking forward to what we can do in Montpelier, getting back to work for Vermonters. It's really exciting, really looking forward to it. But I want to thank someone who's really special to Vermont, who's put two decades of service into Vermont and Vermonters. That's current treasurer, Beth Pierce. That is a tough act to follow. I tried following her in a speech the other day and didn't go so well. She just, not only is she a great treasurer, but she's a great comedian as well. She's a great, she's just a lot of fun. So I also want to thank Will, my partner, for being there with me. It's really an honor to be elected with uh, Becca to be two LGBTQ plus candidates elected from Vermont. <laughs> and, and, and Becca pointed out some um, really terrific national leaders in the LGBTQ community, but I have to point out Representative Bill Lippert, who's here, who has been a leader in the community for decades. And I guess, I mean, Bill, you just, you made it so easy for, for someone like me to be able to run and be open, and it's just amazing. And I owe that to you, and uh, I just am so appreciative of you and everybody else that did so much hard work to get us to where we are in Vermont over the decades. So thank you so much. <laughs> And then I just want to thank my campaign team. So we have our campaign manager that got us through the primary, uncontested, so that one was... But Isaac Dano, thank you very much, Isaac. Our campaign manager that got us through the general, David Kunin. Thank you very much, David. Nick Colazar, who drove me, what, 25,000 miles to every town in Vermont, so thank you very much. <laughs> And Ryan Taggart as well from Brattleboro. Thank you so much, Ryan. And thank you so much to everybody. This is a pleasure. Look forward to celebrating with you later tonight. Thank you so much. <laughs> Folks, we are not done because I am very pleased to introduce our next incredibly energetic, committed, excited, ready to go Secretary of State, Sarah Copenhansis. I know that you guys have been here all night long and we've been waiting for this moment for, I don't know, like four hours, right? 
I want to say, first and foremost, I am so proud of Vermont. I'm proud of Vermont right now. Yes, exactly. So I'm proud of Vermont because at a time when other states around this country are putting barriers in front of people to vote, are asking people to stand in long lines to wait to vote, are saying you are not registered to vote on this day, Vermont over the past 10 years under Secretary Jim Condos has been expanding voter access, has been making it easier for people to vote because we believe, we believe living in a democracy that it should be your right to vote. And we should not be putting... So other states are putting arbitrary barriers in front of people and their right to vote, and we here in Vermont are giving a resounding no. We are saying, in a democracy, everyone should be able to vote, everyone's vote should be counted, and everybody should have the confidence to know that at the end of the day, when the race is called, the winner is the winner. So we've got a lot of really good things to stand on because of what Secretary Condos has done over the last decade with automatic voter registration, with same-day voter registration, now with, with universal vote by mail. We have more that we can build on. We can make sure that when you get your ballot, you also get a voter guide so that you know how to look up the candidate whose values most closely match your own. We have more that we can do in terms of educating people on civics, helping them understand how the democratic process works so that when when you hear stories or you see a social media post about a stolen election, you can say, not in my state, because I know how elections work in Vermont. And we have safe and secure elections because we have 250-something town clerks who are standing there to make sure that your vote counts. Thank you. So I need to give a little shout out to my campaign team. I've had a whole crew of folks who've been helping me along the way. They're sort of standing over in this part of the world here. So thank you, Lizzie. Thank you, Nick. Thank you to my family who's standing in the Zoom with my husband, John. Vermont is, at this moment, pushing back against what's happening in other parts of the country. We are pushing back because we are saying that in a democracy, in a democracy, the point is that your vote counts. And I am so proud of Vermont tonight for standing up and saying no to the election deniers, no to the people who would put barriers in front of your right to vote and saying yes to democracy. We have so much more work that we can do and I'm looking forward to doing that with you. Have a good night. And I am so excited to introduce Vermont's first elected woman attorney general, <laughs> Charity Clark, who has gone all around the state and has expressed to us the kind of energy and commitment that you are going to bring to this job, which is just going to be fantastic. You're gonna make us very proud, Charity. Thank you. Well, hopefully you can hear me. Um, you know, it was 1790 when the first Vermont Attorney General was sworn in. And it was 1902 when the first woman was admitted to the Vermont Bar. And it was 2022 when Vermont elected a woman attorney general. 
to be that woman fills me with humility, commitment, and love of our state, Vermont, the greatest place on earth. In this campaign, I have seen all the good that's being done in our communities, caring for each other, creating jobs, building a world I want to live in and be a part of. I have also seen the work that needs to be done. And after eight years at the Attorney General's office, I know the work, and I can't wait to get started on reproductive rights, on protecting the environment, on fighting for consumers and families, on reforming our criminal justice system. Across the country, there are a lot of really important races happening tonight, and we don't know how this night is going to end. But state attorneys general play a critical role on the national stage, and I will make sure that Vermont's voice is heard. In this historic moment, I want to shout out to those quiet, unspoken workers behind every mother who ever shattered a glass ceiling, and that is childcare workers. I would not be standing before you today without the skill, the dedication, and the care of Kylie, Carolyn, Christina, Emily, Sally, Jenna, Megan, and Earl. Thank you for taking care of my baby so I could go work at the Attorney General's office. I also want to thank my incredible team and all of the volunteers, my family, and friends who campaigned alongside me these last six months. Thank you. Finally, I want to dedicate this moment to the girls of Vermont, like my daughter and yours, who have never seen an attorney general elected who looked like them. When I was nine years old, Governor Madeline Keenan came to my town for Green Up Day, and it made a huge impression on me. I learned that Vermont was special to have a lady governor. These almost 40 years later, Vermont is one of only a handful of states to have never elected a woman attorney general until tonight. So I will close by just saying, Vermont, we did it. Thank you. Vermonters have chosen to bring back Lieutenant Governor David Zuckerman. And I want to say what a pleasure it has been to work with you, David. You have been such a great partner in this, and I so look forward to having you just a phone call and email away as you have been all the campaign. Thank you so much. So I'd love to hear what you have to say. Come on up. So I'm going to start by inviting up my team, but also any of the representatives elect uh, that are still here, any of the senators or elect that are still here. I think this is the wrap up, and uh, I think everybody deserves to be recognized for their hard work, their campaigns, and their victories tonight. So come on up. I want to first thank my family who can't be here tonight. Uh, Rachel had had COVID and is suffering from Lyme disease as well, and it's just too exhausting to be out this late. And my daughter is doing an amazing job with play rehearsal prep, which is Saturday, and they were up too late too. Uh, and I want to thank my campaign team, uh, Lisa Gerlach, who's here somewhere, campaign manager, and Sarah Scortino, who is my field director, Martha Abbott, who has been an incredible standby for me for 25, almost 30 years in politics, and all, uh, all the amazing volunteers. I have grassroots volunteers all over the state who, without their help, 
this would not be a reality. So thanks to the whole team. I also want to thank all the folks who have run for this office. Charlie Kimball, Patricia Preston, uh, Kitty Toll, and of course my current opponent, Joe Benning. I think across the board, decent, solid, positive campaigns are run in the Vermont tradition. I think that's true across the board. We can hold our heads high in Vermont in this era of negative campaigning. Thank you to all my opponents. Throughout this campaign, I've highlighted the economic stress Vermonters are facing. The anxiety of the economic stress combined with the anxiety of our planetary climate crisis is weighing folks down. Our democracy and the breakdown of our democracy and respectful discourse of people with different political differences is weighing people down. People are tired. We need leaders who are willing to step up and meet these huge challenges we're facing right now. And today, voters made that choice. I'm honored to be standing here with all of these newly elected officials. And I, of course, want to also give a shout out to Brenda Siegel, who really fought a strong, hard race. Please give it up for Brenda. I also want to express appreciation and congratulations to Democrats and progressives throughout the House and Senate, where we are gaining numbers. It's incredible. I want to add a couple remarks about our new representative to Congress, Becca Ballin. I had the pleasure, absolutely. I had the pleasure of serving with Becca in the Senate for two years and with her as she moved to leadership positions when I was Lieutenant Governor for four years. And Becca brings an amazing skill set together to be the voice for all of us in the Vermont House. She's incredibly smart and has an impeccable memory. She's a thoughtful, deep listener and if she does not know something, she digs in and asks questions to learn more. She's incredibly respectful. She views issues in the moment and for the long term. All of these and more are the skills and traits that Vermont deserves and can be proud of in our first US Congresswoman. <laughs> really excited. We are sending a leader who will challenge the status quo and the imbalance of power, which currently protects the wealthy and the powerful. And she will work very hard to help make a difference for the rest of us. And with tonight's results in my election and the election of these other great, wide, great statewide candidates and the gains in the House and the Senate, the choice that Vermonters made on these issues is very clear. They chose the message that we should do everything we can to help tackle the climate crisis. And do that while using progressive resources to help our poor and working class Vermonters make the transition to cleaner energy, cleaner energy use while lowering their bills. They made the choice that we have to plan for the future and invest more in affordable housing so that everyday working people and young families can afford to live here. Absolutely, they made a choice, voters made a choice that we need to invest in childcare to support our children and working families and unleash as many as 5,000 more people into the workforce to help our businesses that are struggling to meet the needs that we have. They made a choice, Vermont voters, with these amazing folks up here, that we have to do more about gun safety while maintaining our traditions. They made a choice. They made a choice that progressives and Democrats can and must work together to expand economic opportunities for Vermonters, including investing in education and making trade schools more accessible. They made a choice to expand the House majority so that critical bills to advance this agenda cannot be thwarted with a veto pen. They made a choice to stand for our rights and reproductive liberties no matter what happens in Washington. Yeah. Voters made a choice to remove any allowance for indentured servitude in our Constitution. They made a choice to work towards the health and recovery of Vermonters facing addiction and substance abuse challenges. They made a choice to go with a team Again, all these incredible leaders that want to address our broken healthcare system 
and move towards a universal health care system. And they made a choice to stand up for paid family and medical leave. And they want us to listen, and we are. We all listen. And I want to introduce, excuse me, I talked to a guy in Brattleboro the other day, and he came up and pointed at my sign not knowing who I was. And he said, this bleepity bleep bleep, <laughs> while he wants to help protect the environment, it's going to be really hard for me as a senior on a fixed income to replace my boiler and furnace system for thirty dollars or $40,000. And that's going to hurt those of us on a fixed income. And he went on for a bit. And I let him voice his opinion. And then I said, you have every right to be angry. It is really hard for a lot of people. But I want to give you the full picture. I am someone who has fought for those issues and to make sure we work to raise the resources so that folks can have that upfront money and maybe pay it back with the savings. Because we can't put struggling Vermonters in the bind between wanting to protect our environment and pay their bills. And he stepped back. Remember how he started. He stepped back and said, you give me something to think about. I'm going to tell my three sons to vote for you, and I'm going to vote for you. I've never in 25 years had something turn around in three minutes that fast. But if we listen and we meet people where they are, we can do this. And I've been someone that's not only been speaking out about the, the climate crisis and economic injustice, but within those five minutes, he turned around, and he's going to support us in our efforts on these issues. We have to remember, people are scared. And as we work to solve their challenges, we have to bring them into the conversation. We have to make sure everyone's at the table and their concerns are heard before we're able to move forward with the solutions for everybody. As before, my office will be open to everyone, whether you agree with me or disagree with me. My office will help people through governance and their issues, regardless of whether they vote for me or anyone else. And I know I speak for everyone here that that's how we view our job as elected officials across the state and in those districts. Everybody is a constituent who deserves to be helped through the system. I plan to travel the state and meet people where they are. I'll work with students, older folks, and young people to help them find their voice in the system so that we have the tremendous opportunities to build the Vermont that we want with clean water, healthy soil, resilient farms, and resilient people. We will work together to make this a place of hope and opportunity for all Vermonters. I want to thank the people of Vermont for putting their trust in me to serve once again as your Lieutenant Governor. And I look forward to rolling up my sleeves and serving Vermonters to the best of my ability with this amazing team. Thank you very much. Let's do it, Vermont.